Hi everyone, welcome to ResearchMD.com. My name is Dr. Pramil Charya. I'm a physician practicing in the United States, also a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. Um, I'm associate professor of medicine to a large medical school in the United States. We've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology. We almost finished uh, hypothyroidism. Today's our last topic on the hypothyroidism. Please make sure you watch the previous uh, lectures. We wanted to finish endocrinology, cover every topic in endocrinology. Okay, today, very important topic and our topic today is congenital hypothyroidism it's also another term we don't use it that much is called cryptonism okay and just like everything we need to look at the definition just read our definition thyroid hormone deficiency present at birth okay that's the definition of uh, congenital hypothyroidism or cretinism. <clears throat> now, if you look at the epidemiology, um, the one to one in 4,000, and the female to male ratio is around two to one, and then Look, the clinical presentation is very, very important. Usually, these kids, the pregnancy can last up to like 42 weeks, and the babies are usually, the weight is greater than 90th percentile, and the baby come home, they can be like tired, sleepy, maybe like a hoarse voice. Those are the things you can usually present. But the best way to remember is the 9P presentation, okay? 9P, see, we can remember that, like examination purpose, they can always ask you that. Let's see what the nine P's are. P1, pot belly, okay? Uh, pale, puffy face, protruding umbilicus, protruding tongue. Uh, macroglacia, again, is very common in this people, right? Poor brain development, prolonged jaundice, poor feeding, posterior fontanelle. Remember, posterior fontanelle is going to be wide because thyroid hormone is needed for the, <clears throat> the bone formation. It's very, very important. Now, when you look at the prolonged jaundice in this patient, what happened is there's immaturity of the hepatic glucoronyl transferase, okay? So <clears throat> immaturity of glucoronyl transferase, what does that lead into? You can have um, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, and then you got persistent jaundice. Now, well, it's also associated with the congenital, okay? congenital uh, malformation, the main thing we need a lot of cardiac condition associated with it. And now it's also so with the Down syndrome, you can have like spiky hair, cleft palate, genital urinary malformation, neuro abnormalities. Uh, with the deafness, you got, <clears throat> you got Pendron syndrome, deafness is also very common in this patient. Okay, now let's look at our classification, very, very important, huge classification. First thing we need to know, there is um, a permanent uh, congenital hypothyroidism okay that's kind of pretty much lifelong and there's something called a transient which is discovered and then um, after after the birth I mean at birth and recovery maybe like four to six months and you know within few years now when you look at the permanent congenital hypothyroidism that's the most common we need to worry about you can divide them into primary or secondary or primary or central um, hypothyroidism okay now we're going to move and come up here our huge chart over here looking at the uh, classification etiology. Let's start with the primary hypothyroidism. What are the three things in the primary hypothyroidism is the most one is the uh, thyroid dysgenesis, like almost like 80 to 90 percent. That's how it, as I said, 70 to 80 percent and thyroid dysgenesis, okay? That's an again examination question. There are three parts in that. One is like ectopy and um, a thyrosis and you can thyroid hypoplasia. When you talk about ectopy, thyroid kind of like, you know, the other other locations and atyrosis usually like a thyroid is kind of completely gone right complete absence and thyroid hypoplasia like less development of thyroid now there's associated mutation gtf2 nkx21 nkx2.5 px9 and the other thing here thyroid dishormonogenesis the effect in like you know hormone synthesis you got sodium iodide symphoter defect remember that is in the basolateral membrane uh, where it kind of work with the sodium potassium pump is very important there is a sodium iodide transporter defect iodine is not getting into the uh, uh, cell and thyroid peroxidase definitely uh, thyroid peroxidase defect, you know, thyroid peroxidase kind of need in where the iodination and iodine combine with the thyroid globulin and all that process, okay? And there's resistance to TSH binding or signaling, TSH receptor defect or G protein mutation is kind of common pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Now, when you, this is the primary hypothyroidism. <clears throat> Again, remember when you talk about primary hypothyroidism, always remember the 
first one like a thyroid dysgenesis which has like three parts and that's the most common okay now when you talk about central hypothyroidism we know it's coming from the above like hypothalamus and the pituitary level right so you can have like isolated TSH deficiency in the beta subunit mutation you can also have TRH deficiency or like uh, resistant that's the most common now peripheral hypothyroidism what happened you got T4 and T3 they come to the periphery and they have to work on this like protein synthesis right resistant to thyroid hormone again beta mutation in the thyroid receptor up here okay and abnormalities of the thyroid hormone transport also very common in that now when the next thing the important is the syndromic hypothyroidism as with some syndrome so okay main thing is the Penrod syndrome there's like everything you have to be deafness you got goiter and hypothyroidism those are the three things this pendrin protein um, is kind of located in the ear also and the thyroid that's why there's going to be deafness in the ear okay so examination question very very important and then you got Bamford Lazarus syndrome associated with hypothyroidism club palate spiky hair ttf2 mutation and then you can have chorioathetosis that is associated with hypothyroidism neonatal respiratory distress and nkx 2.1 ttf and qtf mutation <clears throat> now next thing you have to look at is the uh, i mean uh, transient congenital hypothyroidism okay you have to think about the maternal causes and the fetal cause so if you talk about the maternal maternal intake if the patient is taking um what antithyroid medication that will decrease the uh, T4 and T3, right? And uh, you got transplanted passenger maternal TSH receptor blocking antibodies. Usually can stay in the system for like four to six months. And then when you look at the fetal, this is like associated with the iodine transport. And then your atrocytes mutation of DHXO2, DOXA2, and then congenital hepatic hemangioma or hemangio. In the what happens in the hemangioma? Increase the deiodinase type three. That kind of causes the peripheral increased peripheral conception of t43 can convert into reverse t3 and t2 and all that okay those are the <clears throat> important classification very very long classification but if you want to remember i would definitely remember 70 to 80 percent is thyroid dysgenesis okay now when we like how do you diagnose this again let's look at our algorithm we got a nice algorithm up here for you the first one is you got a newborn screen for hypothyroidism initial t4 is less than 10 percentile or increased tsh you or if there's a clinical suspicion for hypothyroidism um, you have to do this measure you measure the free t4 and you measure the uh, serum tsh you can do t4 3 t3 resin uptake and also can be done now if the tsh is greater than 9 and you got free t4 is less than 0 0.6 then you confirm diagnosis of primary congenital hypothyroidism remember that okay now we look at over here the TSH is decreased or normal now free T4 is decreased then you know this is like a central hypothyroidism you know the level in the, um, in, the um, in the pituitary gland or hypothalamus region right and then when you come up here when, once you diagnose the primary congenital hypothyroidism it doesn't stop there you have to do some other studies you can do radionuclide uptake scan can it differentiate between thyroid dysgenesis uh, you can see there's no thyroid activity or thyroid ectopic or hypoplasia will be you can see that you confirm this by doing an ultrasonography after that and then you have to think about serum thyroglobulin and you check for maternal antithyroid antibodies which can block and then you got urinary iodine level usually between 50 to 100 so those are the things kind of recommended once you diagnose with the primary central hypothyroidism now once you diagnose with the central hypothyroidism what steps we need to do just look at it you got isolated tsh and beta gen analysis you can do evaluate for other pituitary hormone deficiencies MRI of the brain in the eye exam you check for optic nerve hypoplasia okay now talk about the treatment of course levothyroxine you know, 10 15 10 to 15 micrograms per kg and then make sure when you give I mean you cannot give with the soy sauce iron or fiber supplement okay and then you got goals uh, what are the goals of the treatment you have to look at you look at the free t4 and total t4 up range of the normal day limit during the first year of life. PSH less than 5. 
and then 3T4, 18 to 30. Just keep it in the upper limit, okay? And then there's some follow-up needed. When, when, when we talk about follow-up, that means you check the TSH and 3T4. One of the things, uh, two to four weeks after initiation of levothyroxine, you check your TSH and to 3T4. One to two months during the first six months of life, three to four months between six months and three years of age, then six to 12 months until growth is complete, four weeks after change in dose, okay? Those are the things. Usually in adult, we check like six to seven weeks. This is like early, we have to do like in four weeks, okay? So just go back and just look at a whiteboard, and you know, it's like a big topic, but make sure you just kind of review it again. Just summarize like one more time right here, okay? First one, I mean, congenital hypothyroidism can also be called as a cretinism. Remember, it's common in more females, just like usual. Remember the nine piece, I'm just going to go over the nine piece one more time, okay? You got pot belly, pale, puffy face, protruding umbilicus, protruding trunk, poor brain development, prolonged jaundice, poor feeding, posterior fontanelle, and also like it's associated with um, with the congenital malformation, especially cardiac condition, also with the Down syndrome, you need to know. And um, <clears throat> the classification, the start, classification starts with what? You got like permanent and transient. If it is permanent, you got the primary and the central hypothyroidism. If it is transient, then you have to worry about the maternal and the neonatal. Okay, when you talk about the, this is like a huge topic when you got primary hypothyroidism, like 70 to 80 percent thyroid dysgenesis, which you got three parts thyros, thyro, thyroid atopia, atherosis, and hypoplasia. Okay, very, very important. And then you got central hypothyroidism, you got peripheral hypothyroidism, syndromatic hypothyroidism. Always remember the Pendron syndrome associated with the deafness. Okay, now you got like transient congenital hypothyroidism. Um, it just, I mean, it's very, uh, just like the name is transient, okay? You got maternal intake of antithyroid bodies, transplant is a blockage of maternal TSH receptor antibody. And then when you look at the diagnosis, we got the nice algorithm to confirm um, the primary um, congenital hypothyroidism, or it could be like, you know, central hypothyroidism. And you once you diagnose it, this is top there. You have to do some additional testing. Always forget, don't forget to do that, okay? Radionuclear and uptake scan ultrasonography, serum thyroglobulin, maternal antithyroid antibody, and urinary iodine should be checked if it is primary congenital hypothyroidism. Is it secondary? You have to do this gene analysis. You can evaluate other pituitary hormones. You need an MRI of the brain. You need an eye exam and all of that. And the main treatment everybody we know is levothyroxine, which we know. And then there are some, you have to make sure to keep at the upper limit the hormones. And then uh, free, you know, those are the like a follow up we need to do. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. If you could help us subscribe to our channel, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please study hard. Thank you.